People love to customize their trucks, paint jobs, rim jobs, and hell, even truck nuts. But you gotta ask yourself, what kind of person puts a pair of plastic nuts on the back of their truck? And better yet, who the hell would invent something like this? Well, it's a complex story of two men who went to war trying to monopolize the truck nut game between the corporate espionage, legal battles, and hell, even death. These two men would duke it out for an entire decade over these. Now maybe to you or me this might seem a bit childish, but to these two men, these, these nuts, nuts were their livelihoods. This is the story of the Great Truck Nut War and the two men who would go to ridiculous, girthy lengths to build their truck nut empire. So what is a truck nut? Now maybe you've seen a pair swaying on the freeway, staring at you dead on in the eyes. And while today these might seem a bit grotesque with the veins and all, in the early 2000s, oh boy, these were all the rage. Much like frosted tips or tribal tattoos, it really was a different time. Now to understand the great truck nut war, we need to look at the two big swingers in the game. Now on one side, we have David Hamm, a rebel, a Steve Jobs visionary. I'm David, and I want to welcome you to the home of America's favorite online novelty tip nut. His company was called YourNutsWithTheZ.com and they would pride themselves on being the veiniest Heavy vein structure Raunchiest You've selected the baby blue big balls Sack you could purchase for the back of your truck in all different shapes, sizes, materials, and colors These are our granite nuts The POW and MIA nuts Again, respectfully place the black ribbon on it Check out the fine print on this, guys these nuts donated ten dollars. Sixteen inch set of we call them Sierra. Here we have the desert big sticks. granite. Again, very rough texture. Really nice. <laughs> oh, look at these! These are so nice. They are the kitchen nuts for you. Oh, 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 man. And on the other side of the ring, we have John Soller, more of a Bill Gates calculating type man. His company was BullsBalls.com, and they prided themselves on being less veiny and having a bit more class with their truck nuts. But I have a question. How could you make this have more class? Please tell me that. Now, who actually came up with this revolutionary idea that would change the world? Now, David says he was at a desert race in the 1980s, and he had witnessed a pair of homemade truck nuts. He had found that there was a certain allure to placing your manhood on an inanimate object. And nearly a decade later, David had never forgotten about how those truck nuts had made him feel, and he wanted to make other men feel that way as well. So after saving his money for the last decade, he would quit his job, cash out his 401k, and start YourNuts.com. Though the path that David chose was not an easy one because his biggest problem was finding someone even willing to manufacture these nuts. Because mind you, this is a, during a time in the United States when it was illegal for toys in some states. So for nearly a year, David would meet with factory after factory and he told them about his grand idea of these nuts and they all told him no. And when David was about to throw in the towel and give it all up, he received the call. Hell yeah, brother, I'll make you some truck nuts. Hell yeah, brother. Let's do it. David says it was a call that would change the world because these nuts were an absolute hit. Minutes within the website going live, thousands of plastic balls were flying off of the shelves and on the trucks all over the world. Blue nuts, gold nuts, big nuts, small nuts. People wanted David's nuts. Hi, I'm David and I want to show you my nuts. And for him, his big bet, his big risk had paid off. And this would all make David an incredibly rich man from selling these. Now, John Soller's side of the story is a bit different. He says, on an afternoon, he was hill climbing with the boys. And as he's going up, he's starting to struggle. And then someone from the crowd yells, show him you got balls. And the second those words entered John's ear, he had an out of body vision of pink plastic balls hanging and swaying from the back of his truck. And then it hit him. John knew he needed to make this vision a reality. So he would quit his job and start BullsBalls.com. Now, John's vision just wasn't from thin air. It was actually deja vu for him. In the 1980s, he had actually found a grandmother making and selling homemade truck nuts on the side of the road. And John was inspired. And just like David, John Soller would become an incredibly rich man from selling his Bulls Balls. This is Billy. One night, Billy was at a rave, dancing with the ladies, peeking hard. And all was well until one of Billy's ladies gave him a head massage and noticed that his hair looked a bit odd. Billy had been losing his hair for the last few months and had worn a wig to the rave. Embarrassed, Billy ran to the bathroom where he stumbled upon an attendant watching the latest Vince Vintage video sponsored by Keeps. The bathroom attendant told Billy that two out of three guys will experience hair loss by the time they're 35. And that Keeps is a clinically proven hair loss prevention service that stops hair loss. Well, Billy was 
33 years old, so he ordered Keeps using the code keeps.com slash Vince Vintage because the sooner he starts using Keeps, the more hair he'll save. The best part is Billy can visit a doctor online and get hair loss medication delivered to his door every three months. This means no more pharmacy checkout lines. Now Billy will use all of his extra time and thick hair he saved by using Keeps to party out with his lady friends at the night show. Billy loves using Keeps and you will too. Hair loss stops with Keeps. To get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com slash Vince Vintage or click the link in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Vince Vintage. So why are these so popular in the United States. You see, America's got a strange relationship with private parts. Showing them on TV? No, no, no. You're not allowed to do that. Oh, no. Oh. But hanging rubber vanny replicas on the back of your truck for the entire world to see, including little kids? That's 100% okay. Well, maybe not everywhere. I know this is hard to believe, but some people were not fans of the truck nuts at first. Hell, some states even tried to pass laws to ban them. One case I found in South Carolina, a 65-year-old grandma, imagine this being your grandma, was pulled over given a $500 ticket for having a veiny sack on the back of her truck. <laughs> when the police chief pulled her over, he said, genitalia is offensive, and as a father, I would not want my daughter looking at that. Well, Mr. Police Chief, I hate to break it to you, but your daughter is gonna be in for a shock when she gets to college. What I find funny is that South Carolina will defend your right to display a Confederate flag all day long, but plastic nuts? That's too far, buddy. Now, there were dozens of cases like this all across the United States, and even with all this negative press, this would only make truck nuts way more popular. Now, the truck nut business was booming. It was hard, it was erect, and the stakes were growing higher, and neither John nor David's businesses took too kindly to one another. It wasn't a friendly business competition. They hated each other. Now, their beef started out with some angry phone calls and emails about who was the real inventor, and the other was a copycat, and this was all just surface level stuff until the first shot was fired in the war of the truck nuts. Now as more businesses were entering the truck nut game and taking a bigger slice of the pie, well, David wanted the whole goddamn thing. He wanted to be the Amazon of the truck nut world and sell every brand that was competing against them. So he would launch all the nuts with the Z.com and it would be your one-stop shop for anything truck nut related. Hi, welcome to allthenuts.com where you'll be able to find all the nuts on the internet. The big ones, the small ones, the veiny ones, the ones that hang with a chain, the ones that hang without a chain, the chrome ones, stainless steel ones, all the nuts right here. And you can tell they're metal because they're hard. I said hard. Every brand of truck nut, antenna topper, stickers. The bumper stickers. You're close enough to see my nuts. You might as well climb in my bed. And then there's the support our troops with the big nuts hammer crushing the Islamic terrorists. And even his sworn enemies brand, Bulls Balls. If you can't beat them, might as well sell them. Though David's number one competitor, Bulls Balls, caught on and they refused to sell on his site. So David had to find a creative way to get his hand on those precious nuts. Okay, here's a whacked out David Hammond. He flies out to California to the Bulls Balls headquarters. He goes undercover, fake mustache, and hell, even a fake name, Bozzy Willis. He walks in and tells the manager, I want to wholesale some nuts. But the manager heard Bozzy's voice from somewhere, maybe from a video he once saw online or something like that. So the manager hits him back with, do people call you by another name, Bozzy? Do they also call you David Ham? Damn it. David Ham's cover was blown. So with his tail and his metaphorical nuts tucked in between his legs, security had to escort him out of the building and without his bulls balls in hand. Though all of this would undeter David because even without their permission, he would still put up a listing for bulls balls on allthenuts.com. And then bulls balls just happened to be sold out. A classic bait and switch to get people to buy David's nuts. Now, John Soller was pissed. He wasn't gonna take the nuts. So we post a manifesto on his own website, calling out David Ham and the scrupulous Ham gang for all of their shenanigans. After getting called out by your competitor in a truly public nut bashing, David Ham would get down and dirty with it. So he would go around and leave thousands of fake reviews online, hundreds of forms, even blogs that David Ham made himself called Truck Nut Balls, Reporter 666, and even Bulls Ball Info. Now what David was doing was he was hijacking the search results for Bulls Balls. So when anyone searched for Bulls Balls, they would pull up all of David Ham's blogs with all of these negative reviews. All of this is happening and John Soller's getting more pissed off. And on Honestly, this was a targeted harassment campaign against them. So he would release the Kraken and fight the final battle in the great war of the truck nuts. 
So the two would duke it out in a 20,000 word, 300 comment exchange, all in the public view on ripoffreport.com. I'm not kidding. There are hundreds of comments of them two going back and forth. Colin went out for being a felon. Colin went out for being a scammer. One for being a liar. One for being a cheater. We're talking hundreds of insults, bad press, and just straight up slander. It was an intense battle for two boomers online in the 2000s who barely knew how to use the web. And it was all over these. Now by 2013, this stuff was getting pretty gnarly. So a peace agreement would be signed when John and David both got their attorneys involved and sent cease and desist letters to one another and that shut them both up. <laughs> so at that point, after this war of attrition, John Soller was done. He was over it. So he decided it was time for him to step down from his nut empire. And just one year later, he passed away. But this war went to the death for John Hamm because when he heard the news of his rival of almost one decade had passed away, quote verbatim, he said this, wow, Wow, he's dead. That's amazing. So what's there to be taken from this story? Who really won in the end? I'll tell you the customer won. Because throughout their fierce business rivalry, we saw business competition improve the product, make it better, more colors, stronger, better materials, carbon nanotube nuts, hell, even cyber truck nuts exist today. And this is all because of that competition fostered between John and David. Now, what's funniest about all of this is that while John and David were battling it out for this entire decade, a third company actually came in and picked up all the pieces and never got involved in the drama. And now that company is number one in the truck nut game. And that company is called Moose Knuckles. Thank you so much to my Patreon peoples. You have a good day.